Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermes, Pennsylvania, and my wife Joyce here. In this edition of the new programs, we try to bring every week different people sharing their testimony. I've known this gentleman now for, mm. oh, I mean, like 40-some years, and uh, my wife's going to introduce him in a minute, but mm -hmm. it's, I'm going to give him a scripture, and then uh, I think this is what the Lord just gave me. It's just beautiful. We're going to tie uh -huh. it right in with you, Ron. It says here, and this is in Psalms 98.1, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Oh. And we're going to talk about the marvelous thing where you came to a bad place in your life. His right hand and his holy arm has gotten him the victory. Amen. Victory. Go ahead. Amen. Oh my gosh. Ron, it's so good to see you. It's good been several years. In fact, I was just saying I didn't even remember that you went by Victory Express. Uh -huh. Your beautiful is, wife right? and your two grandchildren. And so would you just kind of share with our audience what you've been doing, please? Hey, Mark, by the way, they have a beautiful man. I've heard him so oh, many times, you know. Yeah. yeah, we've actually had him and his granddaughters on the show before. If yeah. people have watched this, maybe probably about two years ago. Oh my goodness, yeah. I forgot his, about uh, that. His granddaughters yeah. performed yeah. on See, the because show. because of the youth now, you're taking over, <laughs> I forgot about <laughs> yeah. it. Oh. Yeah. Amen. Well, just to uh, uh, get back on where we were before, uh, uh, how uh, through drugs and alcohol, uh, lost everything. With me and my wife, we had everything that the world said you're supposed to have. We had a nice big house, cars, we had three kids, and uh, I played in one of the top rock bands in Pittsburgh called the Renegades back in the 60s, and uh, I was 28 years old before I took any drugs. I was always drank alcohol, but I was 28 years old and we started on, on into the drugs that was just part of the culture of the music then. And uh, I kind of got hooked on the speed and, 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 and that. And through that all, I ended up losing my home, I lost my wife. Me and my wife split up for almost six, seven months. And uh, she was saved. And she prayed for me for 14 years that I would get saved. And uh, my house was just a, just a it was just just out of order because was uh, that a normal thing to be into drugs when you were doing that band and everything everybody else? yeah the 60s seemed to uh, promote that but prior to that no but in that era it seems as when it started you know we had the sort of the british invasion and everything else that came with it and uh i just couldn't understand uh, uh how i could let that happen to me mm -hmm. but you know uh I couldn't understand why God would save me either, but he, he you know, uh, uh, touched my life and uh, restore it. But even my kids, they, they used to run and lock themselves in the bedroom when I'd come home drunk and destroy the house and uh, just become a different person. And listen, there's some folks out there today know what I'm talking about. There's some folks out there today, they're in it right now, or maybe you're coming through it. You may be going into it. But let me tell you, we have a God that can change things, that he can change things around. He'll restore what that canker worm came to steal off you. He can still restore that. Yes. My favorite scripture is uh, Philippians 4.19, that he'll supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. Because I started going to a little church in Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, and Pastor Frank, if you're watching, praise the Lord. Uh, and uh, I started because my wife invited me. My kids were in a play. I had never been in the church where they had drums and guitars and <laughs> singing and shouting, you know, and that was, whoa. A little, little different. <laughs> that was different for me, Dawn. I'll tell you, on the way home, I told my wife, you ain't going back there. <laughs> and the next week, I was the one that wanted to go back. Wow. You see, the Holy Ghost started wooing me. And, yes. and when the Holy Ghost starts drawing you, you, you can't, there's no stopping. And I remember I went to, the ch I went to church one Sunday. Uh, it was the Sunday after Easter. And uh, oh, the Lord was working on me and uh, uh, I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. I had not been using the drugs, but still drinking. And uh, that Sunday morning, the pastor gave the altar call and I couldn't stop from getting up and going wow. down front. Wow. I mean, there was no stopping. And, and as I was headed down to the altar, I remember, oh, 
What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? <laughs> God's on this side saying, trust me, trust mm -hmm. me, trust me. So I went down to the altar, and when I got up from the altar, Don, my son, Ron, Jr., was clean on the other side of the church, giving his heart to the Lord. Wow. Neither one of us knew we were going same down. Same day. Same day, Aww. same time. And the Word says, when the head of the house is saved, the whole house will be saved. My whole house got saved that day. Me and him were the last ones. Wow. I walked out of the church. I never forget. I walked down to the corner. I always went down there and smoked with a couple guys. And they said, Ron, mm. you don't have any cigarettes. We got some extra ones. I said, mm. no, nah, I don't think I need a cigarette anymore. Amen. <laughs> From that day till now, never had that desire to, uh, to drink or, or, or smoke or drugs again. And Ronnie, uh, you know, it reminds me, you know, whenever we had the, I've said this on the program before, you came to your life in your lifetime where you got sick and tired of being sick and tired of <laughs> being, sick, being and sick, and sick and tired, right? Yeah, you've yeah. seen I mean, how many times pe we had people on this, right? They come yeah. down to the roads in, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, honey, you thought you were living high back then. And, you know, time and time again, we hear people saying, being a Christian is so boring. What do you do? Sit around and talk about Jesus all the time? Don says, what else is there? <laughs> but are you as full of joy now oh. as you were back then? I tell you, I think even more so now. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. There is something uh, to wake up every morning and know that your final destination in this world, if you don't make it throughout the day, it's going to be paradise. Yeah. It's going to be heaven. Yeah. And uh, we have some sainted loved ones that we're going to uh, be reacquainted with there and going to have us some... Uh, reunions and uh, uh, just a, right. a great time when we get to heaven. But we, we haven't stopped. We've been on the road now for 40 years traveling, sharing the good news all across this country, United States, and even into foreign countries, God has called us. He said, I'll take the foolish things of this world <laughs> to confound the wise. I'll take someone that's willing to go and share my word. Amen. Amen. Some of them words when I got saved, and some probably still can't pronounce them in the Bible. But he says, if you go, I'll go with you. <laughs> and we've just seen, just seen souls saved and souls saved. I just finished a meeting up in State College and had uh, 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 a guy in his early 60s got saved Sunday morning at the mm -hmm. service. So praise the Lord. We still see that going on. And I have a tent crusade going on uh, this coming Saturday. Then I'm on the road up in Carlisle and Chambersburg. Then we leave there and we head down into Georgia and Alabama. So we're busy, well, so, busy about Mark, God's work. Mark, didn't you say you heard you heard him play before? I, well, yeah, they played at, at your house when we used to shoot. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But so when you got saved, you know, now obviously you're busy doing all the stuff for the ministry and the, what the Lord wants you to do. But he had to give you a calling at some point. You had to answer that calling. Explain to me how that happened. When I got saved, Mark, I said, God. I'll do anything. I was a bass player. I played bass, and I started playing bass in the uh, band at the church. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. Please don't call me to preach. <laughs> <laughs> the next week, a pastor comes and said, hey, I want you to come and speak at my church. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, you see, uh, 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 God says, if, just go, yeah. you know? And so we decided that we would go. And I decided I'd really like to have my whole family travel with me. So I bought a big old tour bus and away we went. So the granddaughters uh, are going with you too. Yes. Praise uh, the Lord. Oh, and you, you know, you we have a little uh, uh, mm -hmm. setback. If you're out there and you ever lost a loved one or if you lost a child, our oldest daughter went home to be with the Lord in 2008 and we got custody of the grandkids. And, I had them way before then. They were one and three when they came with us, and now they're 16 and 19. Mm. So uh, I told Bonnie the other day, we've been raising kids all our life. <laughs> <laughs> me and my uh, lovely bride, uh, next time we come, I'd like to bring her with me. We, uh, this past March, we celebrated being married for 53 years. Wow. Praise the Lord. And that's a God thing, because yeah. without God and without the Lord in my life, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, uh, I would probably be in hell right now. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that we have a merciful God that, with uh, uh, mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that the message of the, the worship that you do, the songs you do? It's just about like, pretty much bringing the gospel message through music? Or? Through, yeah, bring the through music. Yeah. And uh, uh, of course, uh, I'm a licensed pastor, so yeah. uh, 
But to get back where, where you were saying, when, when the calling came, Mark, you know, I can't tell you the exact day or the exact hour, but you know when he says go. Yeah. yeah. You know when he says it's time to move out, you know, and it's time to go. And it wasn't long after you got saved that you got the call? Uh, it was probably three or four months after yeah. I got saved that he said, okay, now it's time to move out. And I don't regret a mile that I traveled, <laughs> every soul that's saved. Uh, my brothers, my sisters have come to the Lord because of uh, salvation that, that, that I received free, paid for, paid for by the blood of Christ for me and for you. If you're out there today and you're, uh, you're bound with alcohol or drugs or whatever has you bound, listen, you can be set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's, he loves you. If, and that was the hardest thing for me to understand, that someone loved me enough mm. that they would mm. send their son to die that type of death on a cross for me. Mm. An old drunk. Man, mm. I'll tell you, uh, I see he'll get a little choked up when, when I talk. <laughs> I'm telling you, because he's real. If you don't believe he's real, you just ask my kids. They used to lock <laughs> yourself in the bedroom when I come home drunk. They'll tell you how it really, really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. I mean, changed life is evidence, but then also, whenever you seek him, you know, you start to Amen. draw near to him. Amen. He makes himself even more and oh, more real. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, there, there's really nobody out there who's saying, God, I really want you to reveal yourself to me. I really want yeah. you to to show me what it is you want me to do, and then he'll just leave you on your own. This doesn't happen. No, he doesn't. You know, if you, if you diligently seek him, you will find him. I think that's a lot of people who aren't Christians don't realize that. They look at Christians and think, wow, you guys are just a bunch of fools believing in this stuff that you have nothing, no evidence for. You know, you know science says all this stuff, and science doesn't say anything Amen. contrary to what we believe as Christians. Um, but my point here is we don't believe it because we want to, because we're scared of death. It's because we've sought after him, we found Amen. him, and we know how good it is to serve him. And, we, when we, and there's evidence in our life uh, of what he's done for us. You know, it really Amen. is a transformation that he gives you. And, uh, I had one of my brothers came to hear us sing at Shiloh one time, and that's where he gave his heart hmm. to the Lord. He, had, he said, I'd watched you walk for 29 years hmm. and didn't see you waver. So people do watch your lifestyle right. after you get saved. Mm -hmm. and. Sometimes folks will say, well, why don't you go in here and have dinner? Well, I don't go in here uh, a lot of times because they serve alcohol, and that, that was my downfall. Mm -hmm. So I'm not preferably going to go near it, you know, mm -hmm. for, for myself. Might not be for everybody, but for me, that's, that's where I'm at on it. And uh, God has been good. He, he's restored everything. I'll tell you, uh, we live out in Lancaster County now. We had been several different places. I uh, lived in Tennessee for 12 years. And, uh, God has really blessed us t to be a witness. Yeah. And uh, God had a plan for <laughs> us. You know, it's, I always think about Mark whenever Mark used to be behind the cameras here all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And he would have never thought he'd been sitting on TV, right, as a co host, right? That wasn't my plan. And I, I used to watch his face there, you know, because I think one of the things I've said to you before. I think he never saw testimonies like this, right? No, he, not like this. You know, yeah. And he was behind the cameras, and I could see tears come down his eyes every once in a while, you know, from some of the testimonies. Uh, you'd hear these stories, and they're unbelievable about what God's doing in people's right. lives. And I was like, can that really be real? You know, you doubt it at first. Can God really yeah. interact with people in such a personal yeah. way? Yeah. Uh, but then you realize how genuine it is and how, how, how much the people are touched by it. You can see when you're talking how like, it's still very Amen. emotional and Amen. real Amen. to you. Yeah. And, and, I, and you can feel that just yeah. watching it, you know, even behind the camera you and can feel work. that. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. Christian, Christians, are, we've yeah. been with Dawn and Joyce. We, we had a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun in our, our walk yeah. with the Lord, you know. And he said the joy of the Lord is our strength. So. Uh, well, you know, either way, we're a witness. We're either a good witness or we're a bad witness. Yeah. Who are we witnessing for? Who do we choose Amen. to witness for? Right. That's true. People yeah. do. If you, if you claim to be a Christian, then yeah. you better be careful in right. what you're representing. Right. You know, you said you won't go to a certain place to Amen. eat because, yeah. you know, that's a bad witness. If, if, if someone mm -hmm. who's an alcoholic, you're going to places as a Christian where you're going there just to drink or people uh -huh. who drink, you know, it could be a bad witness for them for conscience sake. Well, you, you shouldn't do it. They can see me walking out. They don't know why I'm in there. Well, there's things, even yeah. if you're not doing something wrong, if you're doing something that's a stumbling block for somebody else, Amen. then it is a sin against you. So as, yeah. as we are ambassadors of heaven, we're Amen. ambassadors of Christ, we really need to represent the kingdom the way that we're called to. You know, so. He says we need to avoid all appearance of evil. We need to avoid it. Right. All yeah. appearance of evil. That's right. So, uh, well, Second Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore, we're a new creature in Christ, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not perfect. Amen. You know, we're, we don't have this instant McDonald 
Christianity, yeah. it comes through the Word of God there, reading the Word of God, right? Yeah, well, we're still in the flesh. And right. even once you got saved, that, granted, you have a new spirit, you start being convicted of things, but you are still at war with your flesh. Oh, your amen. spirit is amen. born again, but your yeah. flesh still amen. likes the carnal things of yeah. this world. Yeah. And, you know, are you going to yeah. feed your spirit with the Word of God, or are you going to feed your flesh by just going with the ways of the world? And uh, you, you'll see people who have these encounters. That's one thing I noticed a lot by watching these testimonies. There's a lot of people who do have these amazing encounters with God, and they love God, and then you'll see they'll get back, caught back into the world. Why? It wasn't because what they had wasn't genuine. It's because they didn't diligently seek God and continue to seek God and continually to feed their spirits. And uh, it's just, it's because uh, you think of it this way. Peter, uh, Jesus told him that you're going to deny me. He said, no, you wouldn't. What did he say? He said, your spirit's willing, but your flesh, flesh is, is weak. weak. <laughs> you know, and, and so many times there's things yeah. that Christians want to do that they don't do or things they know they shouldn't do that they do because their, 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 their spirit's not strong enough to overcome their flesh, you know? Yeah, there comes so. a time in your life, probably the Bible didn't become alive to you compared to... Oh, yes, right? yes, and yes. same with you, right? All yeah, of us, right? It, yeah. yeah, it just it, it just comes alive, and mm -hmm. it starts to be your roadmap. You, you get away from, uh, you know... Uh, I wish I'd have had that GPS. Uh, I was 33 years old before I got saved. You know, that's God's plan of salvation. Plus, He get us to where we're going. Uh, but I, I, I look back on my life, and, and we can have regrets that I didn't get saved early. But I'm glad that I got saved the time that I did get saved. Well, maybe it's just like I think you could say that about everybody. God knows the plan, right? Amen. And my calling and your calling, you know, and don't ask me to, but everybody has a calling in their life. It's how long they want to put it off, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the Bible says, you know, we're all born sinners, but yeah. we're saved by grace. Well, uh, uh, you know, you were talking about family a little bit earlier, Don, and I, I raised uh, four kids. We had three of our own, and we adopted one and raised her. And now we have the two girls we're raising, and uh, they're now 16 and 19. But I remember when my daughter went home to be with the Lord, and it was not long after that, you know. And, and that's something, you know, that, that doesn't go away. There's a pain there, but uh, we, we know the pain and the heartache, but we also know the comforter through right. it. We also know him. I never forget it was about a month after uh, she had gone home to be with the Lord. I took the kids and my wife out for dinner one night, and we were sitting at the restaurant, and the lady came over to me and said, what kind of God do you serve wow. that would take these kids, mother? Wow. Mm -hmm. And you know, I sat there, and the first thing you want to do is get angry. And oh, my because, goodness, yeah. And uh, I just sat there for a while, and I, I said a little prayer under mm -hmm. my breath, Mark. I said, Holy Spirit, I, I really need your help. Jeez. And the Holy Spirit uh, said uh, to tell her this, the same God that would save a sinner like you would take my daughter home to oh be in paradise. Oh. Well, you know, you can look at it different ways. So God can use things for good, but Amen. I don't believe that it was ever God's intention for your for your daughter. You know, Absolutely John 10.10 10, where he says, the thief yeah. cometh not but to steal, yeah. kill, and destroy. Amen. Jesus came to give you abundant Amen. life. So that, that was not God's plan. It wasn't his you know? plan. And that's what I, 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 I told her. I said, I said, listen, you can, you can be where my daughter's at. Yeah. No, the reason why she went home, that's up to God. That's not up to me. And when we go home, there's a time to die. You know, mm -hmm. time to be born, a time to die. I said, but that God that took her to heaven, he'll, he'll save you if right. you want to get saved. Well, we yeah. don't dare think that God only gives us all good. You know, sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can't, it's there's certain things that are, not cons yeah. that are not God's doing. Right. You know, even Jesus called the rule right. of this world Satan, not, right. you know, like That's this, we're right. in a fallen world where bad things happen. But even when they do, such as your daughter, right. you know, Jesus overcame this world. This life is but a vapor. So yeah, oh, was your yes, life cut amen. short? Yeah. Right. But as far as eternity is concerned, is that oh, that big wow. of a deal? No. A, no, it's not. It's really not. Yeah. I mean, it, it's sad yeah. for us, but it's not, you know. It, and, and Mark, just, just the good things that came. We had to go to Seattle, Washington. I'd have never went to Seattle, Washington, if yeah. she didn't have to go out there for a bone marrow transplant. Well, I, how would, what would I ever think about going there? Yeah. But while I was there, I led the uh, right. the uh, uh, girl in the office in our in our uh, apartment building. Led mm -hmm. her to the Lord. Sure. Led her boyfriend to the Lord. I married him. 
that who Lord would only know. You know, he, he has a reason for us. <laughs> well, he's able to, to take that. something bad yes. and use it for good. So yes. he can use all things for good. Amen. Those who love the Lord. So he can take whatever the devil's plan is and then spin it on Amen. his head Amen. And, and use it for his glory. Yeah, remember Amen. the story of Joseph I and mean, his brothers and everything. And he, yep. And then uh, Jacob died. Remember? And then the brothers was worried that. Uh, that they were going to bring him back up their path, right? And what did Joseph say? What God, what God, what the devil meant for bad, God meant for me. God uh, used for good. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. Because if Joseph wouldn't have went down into Egypt and got saved, neither would the rest of his family ever got saved. Right. So right? in that case, that actually was the plan. Yeah. But, but he didn't die. You know, it was it was just tribulation that he went through. Yeah, the tribulation. Yeah. It's yeah. Anything, yeah, yeah. For the plan. Yeah. So uh, as families, we go through these things, you know, and, and it, we we have to. Uh, uh, understand that, you know, th there's things on this world that will take us out of here, mm -hmm. you know? If well, I don't have a policeman uniform on, I certainly shouldn't go out and stand in front of a tractor trailer and put my hand right. up, you know? Because uh, you know the authority isn't there. If you weren't into the Word of God, uh, the tragedy that you went through after you become a Christian, right? Oh, yes. You, I mean, if you would have just been, a, I don't want to say a nominal Christian. Well, you know, yes. But uh, just going to church, you know, not involved, right? Because some people get bitter instead of better, I always say, right? Yep, they do. And, and, and it, it's hard, you know, because until you went through something like that, you know, we, we really can't understand it. You know, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. And yeah, like I say, he, then he is our comforter in, in, in that time of grief and in that time, you know, he, he is our comforter. And to have raised two granddaughters that understand that mm -hmm. at 16 years old and 19 years old, you know, that they understand, you know, uh, uh, that now they witness. My youngest granddaughter, Kayla, every morning at her high school, Donegal High School, in Mount Joy, she has a Bible study. Hmm. So they, they have the Donegal Indians as their football team, uh -huh. and they have what they call tribe time. Well, she asked the teachers if she could take her tribe time and have a Bible study. Wow. And they said, well, if, if kids want to go. Uh, she has eight or 10 kids every wow. morning. Yeah. It, so uh, uh, they understand the goodness wow. of God. You know, they understand that. Amen. Do they want to carry on with the ministry? Work yes, that you they do. do. They yes, do. they do. They want to carry on. I was just thinking when he was talking about you, yeah. Don was talking about you, there's going to be a day that we have to pass that mantle down if the Lord right. carries. Right. And just like he may pass that down to you, Mark, and I'm sure God has you here for a reason. Uh, sure the does. same with the girls. Yeah, they said mm -hmm. uh, they want to continue on with the ministry. Uh, amen. That's great. Amen. So yeah. someday I may be up there dancing in heaven, me and Dawn, and they'll be down here <laughs> singing with you. Yeah, that'd, be, oh. that'd be cool. Yeah, right? they're, yeah that'd they're be talented. Good. I remember. Yeah. Even, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think I'll be singing because I always tell this joke. Pat Boone and I ran a tour to Israel one time. We were going down to the Dead Sea, and I was singing, and Pat Boone looked over to me and said, Dawn, you do the preaching, I'll do the singing. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, oh, I think you're trying to make a point, right? So, uh, I, uh, I mean, it, we, you know, we all been through trials and tribulation Amen. in our life, you know, yep. Mark. And then Mark come to me and, and, uh, and, uh, and the Lord spoke to me and said, but this is the man, you know. So I said, okay. Amen. So he uh, has a plan, you know. Yes, he and he's in business too. He runs a business. I run a business. And my wife runs a ministry here. We don't take a salary. Never have, never will. By the grace of God, you know, we have, you know, and, and that's why we crossed paths like 40 years ago, Amen. you know. And I always say that this message is, is not about nothing except Jesus Christ, but you, you know, He, he chose you, by the way. Yes, He did. Amen. And, and he, yes, he chose he all. He chose everybody too, by the way, right? Amen. The Bible said, "I wish that none would perish," right? Amen. But you're out there today, and you're watching this program, and say, "Well, my family was a mess. Uh, so was his." Amen. And and he, it was his fault, you know. Mm -hmm. He didn't made no excuses. Nope. In fact, he knew what he was doing. I knew what I was Amen. doing, right? Now, Amen. Mark, maybe not did some of the things we did, or my wife. Right? I mean, we're different people, right? But you know when it's we right or wrong. We don't need a savior, huh? We don't need a savior. Yeah, yeah. And you know some things you did wrong in of life, course. right? And 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 some people think, well, I didn't know what I was doing last night, baloney. <laughs> if you were drunk, you know what you were doing. Amen. And you know the next day what you did. Yep. So for somebody out there I'm talking to today through his testimony, through alcohol, drugs, or, and, and the ban and the life, you know, you, you can take a bottle. I'm not one that says a bottle of beer is going to send you to hell. I don't believe that. I don't think maybe it's a good witness, but that's your problem, not mine, okay? Amen. We can't put people into bondage. All Amen. we can do is give them the gospel. 
Amen. You no, know, and that's what this ministry is all about. You know, we we have uh, people support us. We need all the support we can. And there's a lot of people watching this program that don't support us. <laughs> we'd appreciate it if you get seven dollars a month or one flat check for seventy-seven dollars or whatever. We had a lady that just donated that whole background here for five thousand dollars. It cost us and it was built, paid for. <laughs> so we do need help out there. It cost us maybe six hundred dollars uh, for one program. And it also we need. Uh, and it's not including airtime. So and I'm and I'm just saying, I'm not here because uh, I'm so excited about retiring. I'm here excited about the Lord. Amen. There is no retirement. Amen. Moses was 80, by the way, and I'm a little bit older. <laughs> Moses was 80 when he was started. So there's somebody out there in a chair that's sitting there. You got to get up off that chair and get involved <laughs> in your church. Get involved in something. You know, because we're all going to be held accountable. You know, the Bible says that God's going to open up the books at the end of, when we die. Either the white throne judgment or judgment seat of Christ. And I don't want you to go to that great white throne judgment, people. I want you to go to the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And you know, when you get there, you have to have an attorney in heaven. And you know what his name is? His name is Jesus. Amen. And he'll defend you every day, every day. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner right now. Right now, I receive you into my heart. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died on the cross for me personally, arose from the grave, ascended to heaven, and intercedes for me. Lord Jesus, right now, accept me, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there, any prayer will do, Amen. as long as the heart is right. It's Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen. We have a telephone number, 724. 9817777. We also have a telephone number 18559819777. We also have a website. You can go to the website. You can watch all of our television programs on crossingpass.org. Now, do you want to make a choice today? Heaven or hell? You made it. You made it. She made it and I made it. Amen. Call that telephone right now. People are standing by. God bless you. We love you. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar. I'm a former NFL football player with the New England Patriots and also with the Detroit Lions. But I struggled with going blind and being overweight. So if you struggle with weight loss, issues with your eye, arthritis, pains in your neck, lower back, or your knees, I know that Freezor has helped me and it could also help you. Please go to our website or dial that 1-800 number and get your order placed today.